Hi, I'm Ty, and welcome to another video. Before we start, let me ask you a question. What would you do to defend your home, your sanctuary, your place of rest, the one place where you can truly be at peace? And if that peace were to ever be threatened, well, anybody would go crazy. Maybe even spiteful. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. People who defended and or used their property just... <laughs> just for spite. Now there are many different important parts to a home, like a roof, doors, working kitchen, and solid plumbing. But when it comes to presentation, nothing is arguably more important than the paint. Fun fact, more people will actually see the outside of your house than the inside. So to say that the color of your house is important would definitely be an understatement. And that's something that the man in our first story very much understood. Stan Pike, also known as my hero, wanted to build a round front stoop on his home. Yet unfortunately for him, the local preservation commission, who I'll be referring to as the council for the rest of this video, would refuse his plans, stating that they were atypical and out of sync with the rest of the neighborhood. Which I completely agree with. I mean, just like, look at these things. Disgusting. No doubt feeling anger and distress, Stan did what any man would have done. Buy multiple gallons of paint and turn his entire house lime green. And then, because obviously that isn't enough, he decided to make a second trip to Home Depot and get some more paint to finish it off with some bright purple polka dots, resulting in one of the most beautiful yet haunting images ever taken. And your boy Stan went all in, threatening to leave the house as is for up to a year if the council didn't change their decision. And then at some point, even his neighbors decided to join in on the protest with their sympathy dots. And with a whole neighborhood that looks like it has chicken pox, inevitably it would draw attention to reporters, which it did. They would later talk to Stan and he would say in quote, It's not like in trying to put a clock tower in the house I'm only asking for rounded stairs. Which like, yeah, but also, doesn't that last little bit imply that there might be other houses in this neighborhood with rounded stairs? Does the council just not like this one guy specifically? Either way, Stan was just getting more and more support. Ted Waters, a fellow neighbor, decided to cut out plate-sized circles made of tablecloth and put them on a tree in his front lawn to show support. Heck, even the local Methodist church decided to join in on the protest. That's right, the council even found a way to piss off God. Now, we couldn't find any images, but apparently the front sign in front of the church had a bunch of purple dots on it, alongside details to a church barbecue. It's been all over the news, Reverend Tave Morgan would say. So we're just trying to ride the wave of the purple dot craze and get people to our barbecue. What? <laughs> in other words, they were really only doing it for attention. And to further show their unsupport, they would take down the dots only a couple days later as they didn't want to suffer the wrath of the council. At the same time though, Stan started to receive postcards telling him to keep it going. Some even suggesting to go even further and add stuff to his lawn, such as an old water heater and a broken toilet. However, he would reject this proposition as he didn't want to devalue the neighborhood as a whole. Now, unfortunately, the ending of this story isn't very clear. From what I found, the council did agree to an appeal meeting on May 27th, 2003. Now, as for what decision was made, I couldn't find a very clear answer. I can only assume that they eventually did say yes, as it would have been more of a headache not to, especially with all the negative attention. However, Stan isn't the only person to use paint as a form of rebellion. In 2019, local California resident Catherine Kidd was reported to authorities by her neighbors for illegally renting out her house as an Airbnb and was fined over $4,000 by the city. Soon after though, in a move that Catherine would claim to be in no way connected to recent events, she would pay local street artist Bobby Z the Art Rodriguez to paint her house hot pink with two gigantic emojis on it. And though she would deny it, pretty much everybody caught onto the message. So this emoji made it kind of obvious. One of the neighbors even claimed that the eyelash extensions were a dig at her specifically, as when she first met Catherine, she was apparently wearing eyelash extensions at the time, even though Catherine would state multiple times that she isn't trying to offend anyone. I did it for the purpose of being happy, being positive, and I think it's cute and quirky and kind of funny, and certainly was a time for the emoji. Now that's not the most unbelievable explanation, but we all know why she did it. And so did her neighbors, who were desperately trying to make the authorities make her paint over it. And unfortunately, this story does not end in their favor, as the city has very little, if any, jurisdiction of murals painted on private property, and that there's next to no rule against painting something creative on their home. And since they exhausted every legal option they had, they eventually had no choice but to find a way to live on the same street as the ugliest house in California, a house that still stands to this day. Let's switch gears now, moving on from people who only use paint to people who straight up use all of the land that they owned. Well, what little they had in this person's case. In the early 1900s, Charles Froling wanted to build his home on a reasonable sized plot of land. Unfortunately for Charles, the city of Alameda had other plans, and that was to build a road that would take a huge chunk of his property, leaving him just an alleyway sized plot of land. 
and just to spite everyone who royally screwed him, he decided to make do with what little he had and erect one of the slimmest yet hilarious looking houses ever made. Looking at the front of the home, I'm sure you're thinking, mm, that doesn't look too bad. But then you move 12 feet to the right and you realize, oh, that's skinny. Now, to be fair to Mr. Froling, it is a pretty crappy situation to be in in the first place, especially for the times. Finding and then buying a new plot of land can't be easy, so might as well just use what you got. Also, I'm sure building something that was essentially just a giant middle finger also sounded pretty appealing. Not just to the city that took most of his property, but also to his neighbor, who was not only in favor of the new road, but also may have helped pave it too. Which is also why he made his house, which is basically just an elongated shed, so ridiculously close to each other that it literally blocks out the sun on the northeast side of the home. Making his home approximately 54 feet long and 12 feet wide. Which, honestly, isn't that bad. There are plenty of people on YouTube with decked out RVs and much smaller homes that are actually really nice. So it really just depends on your lifestyle. This story does end with a bit of a happy ending though, as the current owners are a couple that have lived there for nearly two decades and very much love the home because at the end of the day, love is what makes a house a home. Ironically though, the crux of our next story also involves a couple's shared love of a home. In 1925, an unnamed couple were going through a pretty rough divorce, as most are. But at some point during the discussion, the wife said that she would not sign the divorce papers unless the husband agreed to build an exact replica of their home. The husband would agree to her demands, but only because he saw a fantastic opportunity to screw with her. Because while the wife said that he had to build her home, she never specified where. So I think you know where this is going. So after around a year, the now ex-husband did eventually make an exact replica of their home. In the middle of nowhere. Basically isolated, it was built on the marshlands of Plum Island, away from pretty much everything. And then just to just rub salt on that wound, he decided to hook up the plumbing, of course, to salt water. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the original house didn't have that. Needless to say, the wife never moved in, and the house is surprisingly still up. It was set for demolition in 2017, I'm assuming to build like an Outback Steakhouse or something, but it's since been delayed indefinitely. It's unknown when the house will eventually be demolished, but with the fact that, one, no one is crazy enough to buy it, and two, it doesn't really offer that much in terms of sightseeing, it's safe to say that it will be taken down eventually. So if you want to get some pictures that look like the world's saddest Bob Ross painting, you better do it quick. Anyways, that'll about wrap up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun researching this, and I hope you enjoyed it. Well, I already said that. Anyways, if you could take any lesson from this video, don't buy a house, live in your parents' basement instead. It's always easier. Laters!